to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. It's only one verse. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to have you in the house of God this morning. Good to be here. If you find Ezekiel chapter 22, give me a loud amen. Verse 30. You have it? Well, I'm still searching, Pastor. Okay. Quickly, this is what the Bible says. He says, I searched for a man among them who will build up the wall and to stand in the gap before me for the sake of the land that I would not destroy it, says the Lord, but I found none. I searched for a man among them who will build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the sake of the land, that I would not destroy it, but I found none. Father, in Jesus' name, help us, Lord. Touch our heart today. Speak to us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Everyone says, Amen and Amen. Pompeius Horatius Cocles was an officer in the army of the ancient Roman Republic who famously defended his city from the invading army of Lars Porcena, king of the Classium, in the late 6th century B.C. or before Christ, during the war, the, 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 the war between Rome and Classium. This was a powerful man. Let me tell you a little bit about him. On the appearance of the enemy, the country people fled into the city as best as they could. They were invaded by the enemy. He, Horatius, he happened to be on guard at the bridge when he saw the sudden assault and the enemy rushing down to the river to cross over into their city. And his own men, a panic-struck mob who were running into their city on that particular gate, the bridge. They were deserting their post and throwing away their arms. He reproached them one after another for their cowardice, tried to stop them, appealed to them in heaven's name, to stand, declare that it was in vain for them to seek safety in while leaving the bridge open behind them. There would very soon be more of the enemy inside our city and our capital than there was on the outside, he said. So he shouted to them to break down the bridge by sword or fire or by whatever means that they could. He would meet the enemy's attack so far as one man could keep them at bay. He advanced to the head of the bridge amongst the fugitives, those who were running in, whose backs alone were visible to the enemy. He was conspicuous as he fronted them armed for fight at close quarters. The enemy were astounded at his rare level of courage. Two men were kept by a sense of shame from deserting him. Sparius, Lartius, and Titus Herminius. Both of them were men of high birth and renowned courage. They stood by his side to fight the enemy off from crossing the bridge. With them, he sustained the first temptuous shock. And while confused, onset for a brief moment, then... While well, only a small portion of the bridge remained, and those who were cutting it down called upon them to retire. Come on, cross over. After they were wounded, alone now or by himself, he challenged the enemy to a single combat. Hello. And reproached them as he's fighting them, all with being the slaves of tyrant kings. 
And while unmindful of their own liberty, they were coming to attack that of others. He says, you are, you are under kings who don't care for anybody. You serve somebody that don't care about anything. And now you're messing with us who have freedom. And he stood there and fought them. Come on now. For some time, the enemy hesitated and looked round upon the others to begin to fight this guy. At length, shame roused them to action. And raising a shout, they threw weapons from all sides of their solitary, to their solitary foe, to their enemy, Horatius. He caught them on his outstretched shield. And with unshaken resolution, kept his place on the bridge with firmly planted foot. Hello. They were just attempting to disgage him by a charge, by a charge when he crossed of the broken bridge. And the shout which the Romans raised at seeing the work completed, staying, stay the attack by filling them with sudden panic. Then Cochlea said. Holy Father, I pray thee to receive into the, thy hands and to thy stream these arms, this thy warrior. So fully armed, he leaped into the river, and though many missiles fell over him, he swam across in safety to his friends, an act of daring more famous than credible with posterity. He said, this is undone, un, uh, never seen before. The state showed his gratitude for such courage. His statue was set up in the city. Hello, somebody. And as much land given to him as he desired. Besides this public honor, the citizens individually showed their gratitude for, in spite of the great scarcity, each in proportion to their means. They sacrificed what they could from their own stores, from their own houses, as a gift to Cochlis. Cochlis, my friend, became a hero. And Cochlis was a nickname given to this man, Heretius, because Cochlis means one eye warrior. It is said that this individual, Cochlis, was given this surname or was given this nickname. Because he lost one eye on a previous battle and he was not afraid to stand in the gap and fight for the, his people and his city, which he succeeded with great, great honor. Come on now. This is what we're talking about. The whole country honored him. And they referred to him as the man who could stand in the gap. It was for a man like this, just like this, man, that the prophet tells us that God was looking for in all of Israel at this particular time that we read the scripture in Ezekiel. But the Bible says that there was none found. Not a single man was found that could stand in the gap for the people. See, the enemy that Israel was facing was not a physical, but a spiritual army that was consuming the values and the morals of an entire society. Moral deterioration is the preliminary to a material ruin. Hello, somebody. When you start messing with sin, everything else will go. But what God was looking for was a man with moral fiber and godly convictions. Who could resist the forces of an ungodly society. Born of despair and reckless luxury created by political apathy. There was only a few people that had it all. Because they had the power. Because they had the positions within the city. But everybody else was starving. Everybody else was in decay. Everybody else was suffering because of it. There was sin in that place, and God looks down, and God says, I look for somebody that can stand in the gap for my people and teach them the ways of God, and I found not one man. Not one man that was standing that bridge or on that bridge to protect my people. Not one man. That is a sad comment about the people of God. Our lives, my friend, and our society is affected Every single day when gaps are created and no one cares to fill them. 
There's gaps all over the place. There's gaps in our homes. There are gaps in your homes. A spouse dying, a dad or a mom, it creates a big, huge gap. A son or a daughter, early death, it creates a gap in that family, in that home. Parents who are very limited in their understanding on teaching and influencing their children to a godly and productive life, that's a, a gap that is created and the children will pay for later. Gaps are created to compromise, setting the standards of the family which leads to worldly, uh, ungodly, and unsatisfying life. Hello, somebody. Rewards and consequences are never established in the home. Respect and honor for parents and authority are too troublesome to teach. Hello? Business before pleasure are never established in our homes. And God and church as an option, not as a standard of life. Go to church and honor God if you want to. When you feel like it. Even a greater gap is created when parents divorce or when kids grow up. In a single parent home. Big gaps. I got this from a young man. Who is now. Trying to establish something. A good thing to offer to those that are coming up. Our young people. But this young man is behind bars for a long time. He said, a study was conducted by statistics on fatherless children. Big gap. And concluded that 43% of U.S. children live without their father today. 63% of youth are suicides, of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Five times the average. Hello? 70% of youth in state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes. Nine times the average. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. Nine times the average. 71% of pregnant teenage girls lack a father. 75% of all adolescent pa patients in chemical abuse centers come from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists motivated with displaced anger come from fatherless homes. 85% of all children who show behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. 20 times the average. Hello, somebody. 85% of all youth in prison come from fatherless homes. 85%. 20 times the average. 90% of all homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 30 times. 32 times the average, and 90% of all adolescents repeat arsonists live with only their mother. It's a gap. Can't deny it. Can't close your eyes, your ears to reality. There's a big gap in our homes. A big gap. You see, my friend, it is important for all of us to pay attention to the scripture where God, you can hear God's heart saying, I look for somebody that will take responsibility and stand for what is right. And as I looked upon a nation that is, is going down quickly, that is being destroyed by sin and all the worldliness and throwing God out of the picture, I look for somebody that will stand up and shout and say something right about God. And I found not one man to stand up. You can feel God's heart saying, I need somebody to fight for my cause, for my honor, for my glory. There's gaps in our families, gaps in our homes. There's gaps in the church. The death of a senior pastor or a, or a leader in the church creates a big gap in the church. For those that are familiar with, you know, Christianity and churches and all that, about a year ago, Miles Monroe, a powerful man of God, he, he, he died. His wife died, and I think his daughter or somebody died in a, 
in an airplane uh, crashed and all that, and, and a few of the ministers, he created a big gap. From one day to the next, a big gap. You don't have to go all the way to the Bahamas to see this. Right down the street over here, I think that the, the pastor, about a year and a half, two years ago, he was preaching behind the pulpit, and, and something happened. He died on the pulpit while preaching. Great, big gap. I know some people that it's not the same anymore in the church. I've lost members. There's a gap. There's a gap. There's, there's, there's a gap. And God is always looking for individuals that can fill the gap. And God looks to his people. God looks to his people that he has created, that he has brought to a level where we can acknowledge and fear God to at least a, a certain level. And God is always challenging us to, to come on, I have more for you. I got something for you. There's a gap I need you to fill. There's a calling that, I have, that you have upon your life. I place a calling upon your life. You see, my friend, leaders in the church who move to another city or fall in sin sometimes who are removed from ministry, and that creates a gap. We cannot reach people as... As God desires, because there's a gap, and there's another gap, and there's another gap. And it seems like when you're building and you're moving, something happens and things fall out of place, and there's another gap. And instead of moving forward now, you have to go ahead and retreat a little just to be able to reestablish a solid foundation one more time. That's why when somebody backslides, that's why when somebody messes up, it always creates a gap, especially if you have a responsibility. Gaps in the Bible are very real. And God's heart and cry out to his people are very real when he says, I was looking for somebody to fill the gap. And I found not one person. Let that not be said about Victory Ari Santa Rosa. Let that not be said about God wanting to reach this city and this community and this county and say, I look for a church that will stand in the gap, that will preach the truth, that will go to the highways and the byways, that will go to the poor, that will go to the hurting, that will go to the drug addict, that will go to those who are empty and lonely. And I found out, let that be said about a church here in Santa Rosa, that there was a church who heard the voice of God, the calling of God and we say yes you can call me in you can call me in for your honor and glory come on somebody need to give him a shout there are gaps created in the workplace in society at large gaps that are created and there's no one to fill those gaps it seems like now, what lessons can we learn from the type of man, from this type of man, or a woman who can fill the gap, like my wife said? Well, the guys, okay, they're good, but I can't do it without the sisters. Hello. Men and women. God calls men and women to fill the gap, to accomplish his eternal purpose in people's lives, in countries, in nations around the world. God has a plan, and God raises a people to fill the gap. First of all, what we can learn from, from this individual here, the type of individual that is needed to fill the gap, is that a person first must be willing. Got to be willing to serve. Person got to be willing to serve or to fill the gap. See, many gaps can be ugly, <laughs> dangerous, and undesirable. But many a times, we don't get to choose the gaps. They simply show up at your doorstep. Either you fill those gaps or you don't. We should be willing and ready, like the young man, Horatius. And when God says, 
Whom shall I send? And who will go for me? You and I will be ready to answer. Here I am, Lord. You can send me. Here I am. I'm willing to do what you have called me to do. See, because of the unattractive gaps that life and ministry bring, a humble spirit is needed to go with a willingness to fill the gap. A humble willingness to be at any service that is needed. There's people who sometimes want to serve, but you can hear the voice behind the voice. I serve but not in the children's department. I serve, but don't send me to the parking lot, especially now that it's going to start raining. I serve, but not in the hot weather in the parking lot, Pastor. Let the men's home do that. That's not for me. I serve, but you got to give me the lead mic. If I don't get the lead mic, I don't want to serve. That's why I say that not only do we need the willingness to serve, but humility. I don't care what I do. I'm so glad to be alive today. I am grateful that I'm not at a nightclub snoring the cocaine that's tearing up my life and my family. I am glad that I am in the church house counted as one in God's family. I am a child of God. I was born to do good and to make a difference in people's lives. That's why I'm here in the house. Anything will go. You want me to clean the toilet? You want me to sweep the church what you want God send me I go come on somebody need to give him praise a humble spirit will fill the gap to help the family succeed a humble spirit will fill the gap to build the church that Jesus gave his life for and many times as you fill the gap to help others, you will accidentally, hello, you will accidentally strike a vein of gold for yourself. Actors, they call it understudies. If they get sick, the show must continue. So they have someone else to step in and play their part and fill the gap. It's not usually a desirable part to play, but sometimes, come on, look at your neighbor and say sometimes. It's not usually a desirable part to play, but sometimes great hits have been made by men and women who suddenly were called on to play a famous part and displayed it in a greater power than its original performer. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the main actor got sick. They call upon you to play that part. But when you play your part, there was such a power and anointing that everybody recognized and said, hey, wait a minute. We don't know his name. We don't know her name. But there was, a, there was something special about the part he played, the part she played. Keep them. Keep them coming. And now they're not going to play a second role. We wanted to play the main role. Why? Because there's something special upon them. Come on. Somebody give a shout to Jesus. That's what happened to all of us. That's what happened to these five men and women. They just said, I feel the gap. And God says, you are good. I put something inside of you and I'll bring it out for my honor and glory. Come on, somebody need to give a shout for Jesus. So the man who goes forward only to fill a gap may suddenly find himself to be far more than he ever dreamed that he could be. Woo! Jesus. As I was studying for this message, I realized that my wife and I, that my wife and I 
are simply filling the gap here in Santa Rosa. As I was studying this, God hit me so hard. I broke. I broke a few times studying this. There was a gap that was created here in Santa Rosa at the Victory Outreach in 1997 when the couple who was started the church in Santa Rosa experienced marriage problems and sin came into the picture and a gap was created. And I remember being in the church of Hayward and I was just a guy coming up and I was doing ministry the best that I could, but I never, I never thought. See, you never think. You just come to church. You just want to love Jesus. And the call comes upon your life. When pastor approaches you and Pastor Steve came and said, Jose, Kim, I, I want to have lunch, dinner with you. I remember meeting him at the mall. We went to the mall and we sat down. And, and he says, I've, I've been praying. The church in Santa Rosa has no pastors. And I've been praying. I got a few ministers. I got, but God says it's you. God wants you to fill the gap in Santa Rosa. God wants you to fill the gap. Santa Rosa was never really in my, my, my future, my, my plans, my, my heart. I have plans to go other places. I have plans to go uh, 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 other parts that I wanted to start my own mess. You know what I'm saying? Some of you miss, you know what I'm talking about. I wanted to start my own mess instead of coming into somebody else's mess. I'm so thankful. I say yes. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that my wife and I, that we said yes. Come on, come on, sit down. It's okay. Come on, sit down. I, I want to let you know why. Why I'm grateful. I'm grateful because I never thought I could do this. I'm grateful because I have met so many wonderful people by saying yes to this gap. I'm so grateful because just about every powerful man of God in Victory Outreach International, I know them by name and they know me and my wife by name. It's just big. I'm so grateful that one of the greatest leaders that is going to go down in history as one of the greatest leaders ever in the inner cities of the world, Sonny Argonzoni, and his entire family, the whole family knows my wife and I by name. And we know them. And we have worked together with a man that in history is going to be written down that this was one of the greatest leaders that, that, that ever lived in the inner cities of the world. And God has given us that privilege. I didn't think about meeting him. I didn't think about, I just, I just thought about God. How, what can I do? Look what you've done for me. God says, can you fill the gap? I'm looking for a man, a woman that can fill the gap. And I say, I, I'll do whatever you want me to do. God calls people to fill the gap. But while you, you unselfishly step out to meet the needs and to fill the gap, some, sometimes you strike a vein of gold yourself that is going to be for you to experience. That becomes your life. That becomes who you are. You become so privileged to say, man, I'm so grateful that I say yes to stand in the gap. I'm so grateful. I never thought that it could be like this. But God says, no, I see your heart. I call you. I have something for you. And not only do I want you to live your life giving to others, but he who refreshes others, he himself will be refreshed. Some how God has a way of giving back to those that step out and cross the line and sacrifice for his honor and glory. Come on, somebody need to give a praise. Hallelujah. 
This is the kind of people that God is looking for. Men and women that are not going to be selfish, but are going to say, I'm willing to fill the gap, whatever the gap may be, for the honor and the glory of God. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say, thank you, Jesus. We're just filling the gap, my wife and I. And we're trying to do the best that we can. We were not ready then, and we're not ready now. We're just doing the best that we can. We have hang-ups and faults and all the ugly stuff that you don't see too much. But we're willing to fill the gap. We just want to fill the gap, that's all. There's a need. Come in. I'm in. With God's help, I can help. What is the kind of man, woman that is needed to fill the gap? Men and women who are willing to sacrifice. There has to be a spirit of sacrifice. Like this man, Horatius. When Horatius filled the gap, he knew he was risking, he was risking his very own life. But he knew also that his life was worth the risk. Woo, Jesus. He knew there was a very small chance that he could hold up the gap until the city was saved. There's a small chance because I got fighting abilities. I know how to get down with the sword. Hello, somebody. I'm going to take the chance. And I'm, even if I have to die, then I die. But, I feel, but if I can pull it off, hello, somebody. But if I can pull it off, all of the families in our city will be saved. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to give it all I got. And if God, with God's help, maybe I can hold them from crossing the bridge and invading our people. And if I die while I'm doing it, then so be it. But I'm willing to sacrifice even my very own life to fight the enemy off and try to defend my people on the other side. So he said, I will stand in the gap. Don't run. Don't go in. Don't be a coward. Stand and fight. And if we die, then we die fighting for something worth fighting. Come on, somebody need to give him a shout. You and I choose our fight. We choose our battles. What you going to fight for? You got to fight for something in life. What you going to fight for? Money. This thing much bigger. This thing much greater. The cause of Christ is much bigger than anything on this planet. God is a good God. He's got a plan. Not only for our community, but for our families. You see, my friend, he was the same spirit. This spirit of sacrifice was the same spirit of Todd, Todd Beamer. A passenger on the hijacked United Airlines Flight 93. That when they hit the Twin Towers already, they hijacked the third plane, I believe it was. And he tried to call his family when he saw that things were going down. The hijackers are in the airplane now. They killed one of the passengers. They got one of the individuals here. So now he tried to call from a phone. And he was simply sent to an operator who he started talking to. Somebody came while he was on the phone, and they said, yeah, they got the, the, they, they, they got the pilots already. They killed both of them, and they took, uh, they took control of the plane. He talked to the operator, and he says, there's a couple of us. Oh, Jesus. There's a couple of us here that are going to try to take over this thing. Oh, Jesus. There's a couple of us that are going to put it all on the line right now. Especially when he felt that the airplane took a sharp turn. He knew there was a target that they're going after now. 
And it was just a matter of minutes before they, they hit another. Uh, the Pentagon was next, I think. Or the White House, one of those places. And when they took the sharp turn, he looked at each other. And then, the, and then it tells us, the story tells us about this. The account tells us that the last words from this particular man, a mighty hero, was, are you guys ready? Let's roll then. That was the last thing that they heard as they tried to overtake. And that thing crossed in the middle of a field where nobody else was killed. That was the spirit of a man who says, I will stand in the gap so that I can save all the people, the gang members, the youth, the young generation. They are dying without mothers, without fathers. They go straight to prison for life. And they need somebody to stand and say, nah, not over my dead body over my dead body i will stand in the gap and fight to the very end come on somebody somebody need to give him a good shout this is the heart of a ministry this is the heart of god it is the heart of our leaders pastor sonny agonzoni this is the heart of him this was the heart of my pastor stipideta and i can tell you something this needs to be the heart of victory average santa rosa a heart that will fight to the end filling the gap for god's honor and glory Well, I don't know if I want to go to church. Really? I don't know if I can make it. Well, I like her so much. I, I got to let go of ministry because she's too fine. Shut up. Wait, take a cold shower. Do something. Stand in the gap. Stand on the bridge and say, Ah, oh, you ain't coming in together. You're not getting anybody else. I will fight you to the end. And even if I die, I will die fighting for this. Come on, somebody need to give a praise. It would have been in vain for a small boy or a small girl to attempt to fill the gap. It would have been simply suicide. But Horatius was more than a boy. And he was more than most men. He was one of Rome's soldiers. And he became the captain of the gate, they called him. See, what this society and what this church needs is not only men who are willing or men who have the spirit of humility and sacrifice. But also men of faith and self-reliance. Listen to me. Men of faith and self-reliance. The reliance is based on what God has done through them in the past. And can therefore do for them in the future. They know God has used me. God has done this in my life and through my life. I know it's inside of me. And because of that, I can stand in the gap because the same way that God used me before is going to use me in the future. Man like Horatius, who was an individual again, who had lost an eye already in a previous battle. But he says, I'm not going to allow, come on now, I'm not going to allow all these different things that have happened in my life. I'm not going to allow these things to hold me back from doing what God called me to do. God can use my life. And I, got an, I have experience fighting the enemy. Yes, the enemy took one eye. And I only have one eye. But this one eye has given me even a bigger heart. And what is needed is not necessarily the two eyes. It's needed a bigger heart of compassion and a love for God. And saying, I will stand in the gap for the honor and the glory of God. Come on, give him a good praise if you're going to clap, clap unto Jesus. 
my limitation is not going to dictate what I do for God. I would do what God has called me to do. See, the reliance is based on what God has done through them in the past and can therefore do for them in the future. Men who are willing to consecrate their resources. Come on now. Men and women who are willing to consecrate their resources. Their gifts, their abilities, their experience, their money, their wisdom. To the needs of the church. To impact communities and countries with the love of God. People that are concentrated on, on, on doing certain things. Can you imagine if our concentration came and we said, man, we're coming together. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to build this church to a level where we can impact and influence not only the North Bay, but there will be people send, being sent off from this platform to the four corners of the world. To help the vision of Victory Average International. We're going to send couples. We're going to send teams. We're going to send our men home directors. We're going to send people all over the world to spread the gospel. Man, come on. We're talking about, we're talking about what ISIS, ISIS is doing all of this and not in the other. You know why the, 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 the smaller group of people are doing that? Because they are committed to their cause. The church needs to learn that from these people. The commitment to the truth. The commitment to the gospel. These are the kind of men that can stand in the gap today. And our world needs them very, very, very much. This type of man. Even though the Bible, here as I, as I get ready to close. Even though the Bible says that. I call for a man to stand in the gap, he says, and to stand for the people and for the land so that I will not destroy it, says the Lord. They were in sin, and God destroys sin. God will destroy sin. And it's all of my people who said, I need somebody to stand, but I found none. But guess what happens? Even though there was nobody to stand in the gap and fight, History tells us that this man, Ezekiel, was the man that even though God was using him to write this, he is the one that stood up and said, Lord, I will be that man. So history tells us that this man began to go to the highways and the byways. He began to tell the people about a God who loves them and the way to God. Because, remember this. Remember this, because God is always looking for somebody who will stand in the gap to point people to the one that fill the gap for every one of us. You see, there was no way for us to be saved or to find our way to a, a real connection with God after sin came into the picture but it was jesus who is standing perhaps one hand god's kingdom and the other hand on the people the world and he created a bridge so that people can cross over from death to life because he stood on that cross. He stood. He filled the gap. And he says, I just need people that can point all the people to the one that can fill the gap for every individual on the planet. All society. That society does not have an excuse anymore. Because there is one that I pay the price and has filled the gap. Listen, my friend. All we're doing here in Santa Rosa. All we're doing here in the North Bay. And we're going to continue to do. Even as we preach with passion, even as we do all this, we're pointing people to Jesus. Jesus is the one. No matter what gap has been created in your life, it could be in your family. It could be because of your spouse. It could be because of your son or your daughter. It could be that somebody is no longer there and is a, a gap was created. We're pointing you to Jesus. Because Jesus is the only one that can fill any gap in your life. Any gap in your life. Any gap in your life. 
Jesus is the one that can fill that gap. You feel lonely today? Come on now. You feel betrayed today? How, 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 what are you going through? What has happened in your life that has created those gaps? Today, if you just stand to your feet and lift up your hands to the Lord, there's some of you that have been challenged to become everything that God called you to become. There's some other ones that are saying, Oh God, I feel this and this hurts. I feel this pain in my heart and in my mind and I wish it, this will go away. And you face it all the time. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, you are the reason for our hope. You have brought purpose into our lives. I thank you for the ministers, Lord, and their families. But then I thank you for everyone in this congregation. Raise some more Horatius in this church. Men and women that will stand in the gap with an attitude of gratitude and humility and courage as never seen before that would say, I stand in the gap. Send me, Lord, I will go. In Jesus' name. Come on, from all over the place, you want me to pray for you today? You want to go ahead and allow God to do that a wonderful work in your life, to use your life to become productive in the kingdom of life, of the kingdom of God. Maybe in your own ministry. Maybe in your family. Come on, come on, come on. Then I want you to come forward, young people. Come on, come on, come on. Dad, mom, husband, wife, son, daughter. Come on, come on, come on. He said, I want, I, I want, I'm going to feel the gap. I see the need. I will fill the gap. Thank you, Lord. Come, come this way. Come this way. Let me pray for you.